Tampa Bay's trek through the American League East continues tonight at Fenway Park with right-hander Jake Odorizzi going to the hill against the big bat of Henley Ramirez and the Boston Red Sox. Boston, where it has been a magnificent day. Temperature in the lower 80s here. And at Fenway Park, it will be the Rays and the Red Sox in game one of this three game series. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to an evening of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson, Dwayne Stats. Great to have you aboard. Well, the Rays and the Red Sox meet for the second time this year. Rays won the first series two out of three. And tonight, They'll open a three game series here at Fenway. They've been a lot of big bats through the years here at Fenway Park. Right now, the biggest bat is Hanley Ramirez. He's one of the guys that Jake Odorizzi will try to tame tonight. Well, Hanley Ramirez learning a new position, learning American League pitchers, and it's been no problem at all in the transition as far as the bat goes. And look at the production. A 283 average leads the teams with 10 home runs. That's second in the American League. 22 runs batted in. That's third. 17 runs leads the Red Sox. A balanced approach, a quick bat. And I'm going to tell you something right now. He has made teams pay. Now, I will say this. This last weekend series against the New York Yankers, they were able to control him. And so you hope that the Rays can continue that for the next three days. Now, Jake Odorizzi is going to get the first shot at it. He's not had a whole lot of success here at Fenway Park, but he did face this team on April the 23rd, pitched into the seventh inning, something that he has done in all five of his starts this year, and he pitched very well. Just the three hits given up, the one earned run. You know he's going to make this Boston lineup respect the entire strike zone, and he'll go to bat battle shortly. And there is the pitching matchup. Jake Odorizzi coming in at 2-2, two and two, making his sixth start of the year. And Clay Buchholz can be very good or very bad. He's one and three with a 576 earned run average. When the Rays see him, unfortunately for the Rays, most recently, he's been very good. Offense continues to be an issue for the Rays. Logan Forsythe is swinging a good bat, however. We'll hear from Logan when we return.
Boston Red Sox on an unusually warm Monday evening from Fenway Park as the Rays get ready for the first of three with the Red Sox. One guy in the Rays lineup who flies way under the radar is Logan Forsythe. Here's a guy who is tied for the team lead and runs batted in. He's playing spectacular defense at second base. And when you compare his numbers this year to last year, now keep in mind, last year he wasn't playing on an everyday basis, but they are staggering. Hitting close to 300 this year compared to 188 at this point last year. 10 extra base hits, half as many last year through 25 games. And those 11 RBIs, just two last year through 25 games. We asked Logan about the big difference playing every day in 2015. Anytime you get consistent play, is, uh, you know, it's good to get out there and get in a routine. I think that's more of the... The everyday aspect is being able to stick in that routine and knowing what you got to do to prepare to play. Um, you know, for as long as I've been playing, it's been kind of that bench player role, step in when a guy gets hurt. Um, and, you know, that's day to day. You never know if you're going to play or not. But Cash has been great with letting us know, like, when we're in the lineup, when we're not, when we're having a day. So um, it's been good so far. You can hear in Logan's voice, he's battling a little bit of a cold, but that didn't stop him from a double and an RBI base hit in last night's game. Raising the Red Sox, getting ready to start this series. Play Buckholz for Boston, Jake Odorizzi for Tampa Bay. Enjoy all the action next on Sunsport. Rays have lost two straight, four of their last six, and offense has been an issue. There are some offers in this lineup that they'll try to address tonight. And let's take a look at the Rays starting lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Kevin Kiermeyer up in the leadoff spot tonight. Steven Sousa Jr. will hit second, and James Loney third in front of Evan Longoria with David DeJesus hitting fifth. Logan Forsyth in the sixth spot has Drupal Cabrera back to the lineup, hitting seventh at short. Joey Butler's in there again as the DH out of the eighth position. Rene Rivera, the catcher, bats ninth. Taking the mound, 
tonight for the Boston Red Sox is right-hander Clay Buckholz making his six starts of the season. And as Dwayne mentioned in the open, he's been very good and he's been very bad. Nothing in the middle. The good starts right out of the gate. Seven shutout innings against the Philadelphia Phillies and a couple of struggle starts. And then against the Rays, He's got a good history against them over his career, and he threw the ball well in that game, picked up a no decision, but went six innings, two hits, and one earned run on April 23rd, ironically enough, also opposing Jake Odorizzi. Let's take a look at that Boston defense for you tonight. In the outfield left, right, Hanley Ramirez, Mookie Betts, and Brock Holt across the infield third to first. Pablo Sandoval, Xander Bogarts, Dustin Pedroia, and Mike Napoli, Sandy Leone will be behind the plate. We are all set to play baseball in the first pitch of this game. Swung on and fouled right back toward the base of the stands for a strike. That first pitch presented by Pinchapenny. 78 degrees here as we start play. Kiermaier hitting 296 on the year. Pitch is down. Rays come in with 13 wins and 12 losses. The Red Sox come in with 12 wins and 13 defeats. Tap headed to second, and Pedroia makes the pickup on that one. One away. You see Kiermaier with those glasses. He's had a little eye irritation in recent days. They're clear, and so he's wearing those to protect from wind and anything that might cause him some discomfort. Well, and and you know, the the Rays have not played outdoors. I I mean, they've been inside all season long, except for the three games in New York. That's when he noticed it. And so you put those into play here in Boston. Very strange beginning of the season as far as where the Rays have have played or not played. Steven Sousa Jr. takes the pitch down. Well, he is in the midst, and he hopes actually on the backside of a hitless streak. 0 for 17. There's a strike. David DeJesus has a similar stretch going. 0 for 17. Cabrera 0 for 14. Rivera 0 for 13. Something's got to give. Well, and I think with, with Souza Jr., it, it has now crept into his head just a little bit. Some of the facial expressions that we've seen, the fact that we really haven't seen him put back-to-back swings together that are very similar. I mean, he's, he's kind of been all over the map as far as that swing goes, trying to get that timing and rhythm back. Two and two. And quite frankly, I thought coming in here after the weekend series where he had nine strikeouts, that set a club record for strikeouts in a in a you know three game series. I thought for sure he would have a day to just kind of let the, the the mind go a little bit, a little bit of a day off because of the struggles. But he's right back out there. Always hard to make that decision. I know. You know, maybe being in the lineup's the best thing for him, especially if he gets a hit or two. And now the count is full. Otherwise, he might be sitting in the dugout thinking, well, what can I do now? Yeah, and you're right. I mean, for the player, they're going to tell you that all the time. I want to be back out in the lineup. You know, I don't want to sit and think about it, but then you have to juggle that with, but I need some production somewhere, and I've got a lot of offers that you just went over. And a cut and a miss. The ball cutting away from him. You know, you, you hear a lot of times a, a starting pitcher, a pitcher in general, will pick up a cutter, especially a right-handed pitcher, will pick up the cutter to, to be able to jam left-handed hitters. But if you look at Clay Buckholz and his breakout, he throws the cutter way higher percentage against right-handed hitters, almost uses it at a little as a little mini slider, and that's what he got Sousa Jr. on. Yeah, there are times, there are games when he throws that pitch to right-handed hitters more than any other pitch. Now James Loney. Down the left side with some slice to it. It will be caught by Ramirez, and he could not hang on. That ball is in play. And down to second goes Loney. He'll make the turn, and Ramirez may have hurt himself. Well, there's not a lot of give 
on that wall. First of all, not a lot of foul territory, number one. And number two, that's a hard wall down that left field line, and he absolutely is in pain. And you can see it right there on his face going into the left shoulder. That would be a major injury here to this Boston ball club. As we mentioned in the open, he has been the big bat for them. Ten home runs, 22 driven in, and learning a new position. Left field, never played there before, and not easy to manage the green monster and the lack of foul territory. Now, if you go to that line, you have almost no space to put on the brakes if you're going full speed ahead approaching the foul line. And that's what happened to Ramirez right there right into the sidewall. Well, even had trouble getting it back into the infield. You could see the amount of pain that he was in. So Hanley Ramirez injured. She tried to catch that fly ball off the bat of James Loney. Had it in his glove. It got away. And just add insult to that injury. He gets an error on that play as well. Is the official scorer's ruling. So Ramirez leaves the game. Alan Craig takes his place out there and left. And the umpires are going to get together here. And uh, I think they want to take a look at that play to see if it should be an out or not. Well, you know, here was the thought. You start thinking about football, and, and, and you make a football move after you catch the ball. You know, he caught that ball into the glove and then took two or three, at least two or three long strides before hitting that wall. Does that constitute possession? Remember, it was it last year or the yes. year before? I think it was the beginning of the season last year when the ruling was that you had to take the ball cleanly out of your glove, and there were guys making great catches and running four or five steps into the wall and then taking it out yep. and dropping it yep. and all of a sudden the guy was safe. Well, the Red Sox wanted them to check this to see if uh, maybe the, the eventual remedy to that dilemma that it created last year might apply here. But uh, apparently the call will be confirmed. So it's uh, no catch. And the Rays will have Loney at second base and two outs with Evan Longoria about to step in. Evan is the only hitter in the Rays lineup who has hit a home run off Buckholtz in a Rays uniform. Cabrera has two, and Longoria hit one in the postseason off Buckholtz. Otherwise, there aren't any home runs in this lineup off this guy. No, that, that's the one thing that he has done extra, extremely well against the Rays. 123 and two-thirds innings coming in against the Rays and 19 starts and five home runs. That's it. He's kept the ball in the yard, part of the reason this, for the success. One and one. Evan hit one in the 
American League Division Series in 2013 off him. One one count. The Rays looking for a chance to break out in front. As you know, they have had trouble with men in scoring position, hitting only 208 with men in scoring position. And Evan, part of that issue, he's one for 16 this year. Sales in. Two and two. Off speed pitch. David De Jesus on deck. There's a shot toward the corner. That ball's going to be in there. Here comes Loney in to score. Longoria is on his way to second with a double, and the Rays lead 1 0. Longoria comes through this time. Well, he was able to get a cutter, and we told you already how fond Clay Buckholz is with that pitch. And this one just stays up. Evans able to get out and to it and loft it down the left field line, drop it in there, change places with Loney, and give the Rays the lead. So another man at second, and here is David De Jesus. That's a strike. So the Rays in their first opportunity with a runner in scoring position cash in tonight. Ball and this one skips past Pedroia into right. Holt with the pickup. Here comes Longoria into score, and it's two to nothing. Well, the Boston Red Sox just got done being swept by the New York Yankees over the weekend. First time the Yankees have done that in a series of three games or longer here at Fenway Park since 2006, and a lot of it had to do. Well, there's a lot going wrong in that series, but sloppy play by Boston. And it continues here in the first inning. You know, a tough luck error on Hanley Ramirez, but then a ball that we see Dustin Pedroia, we make, see him make that play time and again, can't do it. And the Rays have capitalized both times. So that goes as a hit for David DeJesus, who snaps his hitless streak and drives in a run. Now it's Logan Forsythe. It's a strike. So, so Hanley's was an error, <laughs> or, and that was a hit. Okay. Could be seniority. Maybe. <laughs> and uh, apparently, they just heard you because they're going to change the error to a double. Okay. Well, there you go. Thank you. I mean, that was fast. <laughs> We're over to first close play. Good news travels fast, Wayne. <laughs> so it's a double for Loney, which means that all of these runs will be earned. I say all of them, two of them so far. I fouls it, and it's an 0-2 count. Well, we said early on, or maybe it was even in the pregame show, where Clay Buckholz has struggled is with runners on. Mm -hmm. Runners on, a batting average of 417 coming in. Runners in scoring position, 444. Well, guess what? Loney, scoring position. Longoria, scoring position. Two hits. Trend continues. That and was the key. This one skied high to shallow left toward left center. Craig there to make the catch. 
Rays are out. They pick up two runs on three hits and lead 2 nothing. Let's take a look at the starting lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. The Red Sox will have Betts leading off, Mookie Betts in that leadoff spot, followed by Dustin Pedroia and David Ortiz, Hanley Ramirez, Pablo Sandoval, then Mike Napoli, followed by Brock Holt, Xander Bogarts, Sandy Leon, the catcher, bats ninth. I'll take the mound tonight for the Tampa Bay Rays. Right-hander Jake Odorizzi making his sixth start of the season. One of his goals coming in was to pitch deeper into ball games. Well, mission accomplished. He's pitched in to the seventh inning in all five of those starts. First pitch, and Betts takes a strike. Jake holding the opposition to... A 175 average and right handed hitters just 109 off him. Lefty's 216. How about that? Five out of 46 right handed hitters. And there's strike two. Betts looking at the first three pitches. And that's something this young outfielder, Mookie Betts, has shown he will do. He will take a lot of pitches. The right side foul out of play. Well, and to do that, that tells you that he's comfortable hitting with two strikes. And not a lot of guys do that. And so he's got that prototypical leadoff hitter approach where they're not afraid to go up there, see some pitches, let the bench see some pitches. Ooh, pretty close there. That's a close pitch to take. I don't know how many 22-year-olds are going to take that pitch on one and two. Jake trying to dot that outside corner, and he really, he could have been rung up there. Yeah, now that's where you ask yourself, okay, did he take the pitch because he's got such good strike zone discipline, or did he just realize I got locked up and there was nothing I could do with that pitch? I almost think the latter of those two. Ground ball to third, comes up on Longoria, and he rifles it to first to get Betts tell you what nice job by Evan to stay with that because that ball did come up came up about chest level that could have very easily ricocheted away from him but he was able to corral it keep it up high and then make the throw so right there yeah and especially important to get him because Oda Rizzi had to get him out twice in that at bat and you want to keep that guy off the bases here's Dustin Pedroia first pitch strike Pedroia with five home runs hitting 286. 0 2. Go 
Governor Rizzi has lost two decisions here at Fenway. It's been a tough place for him to pitch. And all, all you need to be told about how his days or nights went here were the two starts encompassed six and a third innings. Yep. Combined. Came out with an 825 earned run average here. We but he's learned a few things. Yes. You know, it's a whole different approach now for him, and that's why it's interesting kind of looking forward to how he fares in this start because he's not only stronger, but he makes these hitters defend the entire strike zone. Yeah, that, that's the big difference. And that, that was something that he kind of, I don't want to say stumbled on because it, it would be by accident, but he started to elevate that fastball last year, had a ton of success with it. He can still work down in the zone and below the zone with the split change. So he does make you defend everything. And that's tough for a hitter. You know, they, they can't zone in on one spot because, he'll, you know, we just talked up and down, but he'll also pitch in and out. So he gives you a lot to think about. And especially if he's ahead in the count, it's going to help any pitcher to be ahead in the count. But with him and you're the hitter, where's he going to go next? And, and that's where... You know, when you when you face a guy like Jake Odorizzi, you have the scouting report. You really have to go back and do your own homework and say, how is he pitching me? Because that's probably going to stay the same. And he's had success against Pedroia. So Pedroia's got to say, well, if he's getting me out consistently the same way, he's probably going to stick with it. So that I can start to look for some things. That's how you make adjustments. High up the right side toward the line and it's going to be in and out of the glove of Suja Jr. Pedroia heads to second and he is in there safely. Well you see how difficult it can be to defend here in the outfield and particularly in this case in right. We already saw Ramirez have trouble with no ground in left and then the pesky pole comes into play rather quickly here. And, and a short wall you've got very little. Uh, you can see the frustrating. There's there's not a lot of room to maneuver over there. You're coming up on the fans. The wall's short. A lot of distractions, and that's exactly what happened. Steven Souza Jr. taking his eyes off the ball late, and it's off the heel of the glove. So they give Pedroia a hit. <laughs> wow. You got any comments? <laughs> well, Just let him know. <laughs> I'm going to walk down there. <laughs> Here's David Ortiz. And he checks on the pitch. Hey, you don't want to give uh, you know one of the Rays players an error, but that was a fly ball down the right field line that he was mm -hmm. he was under. Yep, that's a ball that's got to be caught. One and one. Well, and it doesn't hurt the fact that the official score here in Boston, his name is Jim Pedroia, so it makes sense. <laughs> I think there's a room in Dustin's house upstairs <laughs> for him. And, and a pool and a pond. <laughs> Foul back by Ortiz. It's one and two. Lives over on Briar. <laughs> nice neighborhood. For some people, a pond is better. For you. <laughs> I had one once upon a time. I was always afraid of ponds. <laughs> Never know what you're going to, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Kind of creepy down at the bottom. Had a gator in ours. Okay, there's another reason why. Oh, he's out on strikes. David Ortiz out on strikes. Two gone. Nice pitch. Up in the zone. Cannot hold up. Like we said, he's going to move the ball all over the place. And well, he goes right up above the belt there. And David Ortiz, you want to take a rip at it. Can't get to it. Well, here's Alec Craig. Craig replacing Hanley Ramirez. Good. 
Pitch is a strike. Shortstop picked up by Cabrera. That takes care of Craig. Man left at second base. We go to the second. Two nothing. Rays. Clay Buckholtz and our GMC big big matchup Cabrera four for 11 with a double and two home runs in his career off Clay Buckholtz and Cabrera is trying to snap a hitless streak to start the night he's 0 for 14. And in. Cabrera hitting 194 overall and 239 against right handed pitching. Fouls it back. Cabrera to be followed by Joey Butler. And a bunt attempt popped up a foul ball Sandoval after it coming in from third but could not get there in time. Clay Buckholtz 30 years old. 31 in August. It's upstairs, and he has been hard to figure at times in recent years for this Red Sox ball club. And he set a pretty high bar throwing a no hitter in his second big league appearance back in 2007. Ground ball, that's going to go through. Cabrera is aboard. A leadoff single, and he snaps his hitless streak. So the Rays are taking care of some of these hitless streaks in the early part of this game. All great signs. Well, you knew they had to do it at some point. It's nice that they're doing it all at the same time, like you said. 
Got our T-Mobile game changer. See Buckholtz the last three seasons at Fenway compared to 2013 when he was six and one with a 199 and nine starts. And then the, the last couple of years, year and a half, year plus, he's really struggled at home. Big cut by Butler. And he fouls it back. You know what to I the thought? tune of a 660 yard run out. At home. Yeah. Yeah, that's you know, that's something that John Farrell was talking about with the media, saying, listen, they just got swept by the Yankees, said we need to make Fenway Park the home field advantage that it should be. We get, need to make it that once again. And when you got your, your number one out there with a 660. Here's Butler driving one deep to left. Out of here. Over the green monster and a home run for Butler. Butler hit an off-speed pitch out of here, and the Rays now lead four to nothing. That's the first big league home run for Joey Butler, and it gives the Rays two more. Boy, what a place to get it and over the monster. That ball looked like a changeup sinking down and in. And boy, did he unload on that. Pitch outside to Rivera. Well, the Rays saw some signs of that power in spring training. He went to Durham and was, as we mentioned yesterday, hitting over 300 there with his fair share of extra base hits. And he just picked up his first big league home run over the monster. And that guy's absolutely right. The butler did it. How about that for picking out a shirt for the ball game? You gotta have it signed now, <laughs> don't you? So two runs in the first, two more quick runs in the second inning. Well, the, the Rays are catching this Boston team at the right time. You know, they're in the middle uh, towards the end now of a nine game homestand. They're two and four, just got swept by the Yankees. Not playing very good baseball. We saw that in the first inning, and they're getting the Buckholtz here again in the second. A little looper, shallow right, but it will hang up. And Holt is there to make the catch. Rivera making a bid to snap his hitless streak, but it hung up. And Holt was there to catch it. Well, you hit it at the wrong guy. That's the problem. You got to go away from Brock Holt because you never know where you're going to find him. But wherever he's at, he makes plays. See him in the infield. This guy can play just about every position, has played just about every position on the field. Last year he did it, every position except pitch and catch. Kiermaier takes it down and in. One ball, no strikes. Tap to the right side. Pedroia makes the play. Kiermaier for the second time tonight thrown out by Pedroia. One of the interesting things, you know, you're going over some of Clay Buckholz's numbers. How about this is his ninth season in Major League Baseball, and he has not one time, he's never made 30 starts in a season or thrown more than 200 innings. That's kind of hard to believe. With some of the games we've seen him throw. Yeah, the Red Sox look to him to be their number one guy. Yep. His high in the innings was back in 2012. Had 189 and a third, but still has never reached the 30 start plateau. Oh, and this one hits Susan. Mm -mm. And I think it got him on the hand. Maybe up on that forearm area, on the elbow. Yeah, and I think it was the it was the back elbow, that ball or the wrist or forearm somewhere in there. That ball just snuck through and got that back arm, and you can see he is in a ton of pain. Oh yeah, that 
forearm, the back forearm. Let's listen to this. Ron Porterfield out there. Let's see, examining the underside of the forearm. And, and those initial, and you could see the poking and prodding and pushing. Well, you'll know when he hits the spot because there you go. Henley Ramirez has left this game for Boston, colliding with the wall and left in foul territory. And Sousa Jr. hit by a pitch. Kevin Cash. For a moment, it stepped away, headed toward the dugout, and then turned to make sure. Souza says he wants to stay in there, so he'll go to first. So, with two outs, Souza's aboard. Second batter hit this year by Buckholtz. Loney fouls it back. It was Loney who hit that fly ball slicing toward the line and left in the first inning that resulted in a double and an injury to Hanley Ramirez. Ramirez subsequently replaced by Alan Craig and left. And a lob over to first. Here's the injury to Ramirez on that ball hit by Loney. There's a well hit ball to right. Holt back though to the track and he makes the catch in front of the bullpen area. Rays come up with two however on the first major league home run by Joey Butler over the green monster here at Fenway and the Rays lead four to nothing.
being hit by that pitch and the right arm. He's got a right arm sleeve now. Yeah, a little compression on that spot. The pitch here to Sandoval is too low. One ball, no strikes. One and one. Well, the Red Sox had a difficult series here at home against New York. But Pablo Sandoval was five for 12 in that series. And their two bat additions have so far worked out pretty well. Ramirez had to leave because of the injury, but he. Start of the night, second in the league with 10 home runs, and Sandoval, who's caught looking right here, is out on strikes. But he's off to a good start at the plate. But out on strikes, his first time up tonight. Wow, Jake Odorizzi, 92 miles an hour, and I mean, you cannot walk that ball to home plate and place it in the catcher's glove any better than what he just did. And I don't care how hot a guy is, when you can make pitches like that. You win. Yeah, we've seen him work a left-handed hitter away. We've seen him go up successfully. And with that split, danger down. And how about that? And that's how he likes to use it, the curveball, early in the count for a get-me-over strike. All of a sudden, you're 0-1. You know, now 0-2 right. for Napoli. And, and a guy like Mike Napoli, he's up there. He's a dead red fastball hitter, and he crushes hanging breaking balls. But you can go up there with him at first. He's not looking for a first pitch curveball. Well, number one, he's known for seeing a lot of pitches. And so if you're confident that you can throw a good curveball for a strike on the first pitch, it's almost an automatic strike to get ahead. That's exactly, and that's exactly how that pitch can be used successfully. It's why Jake Odorizzi uses it the majority of the time early in account just to buy that quick early strike. It's a shot to center field. Kiermaier on the run and grabs it to make the catch. And then how about the throw in? You know, sometimes we get the hop. You never know what we're going to get with Kiermaier, but he does like the cross body throw in. I'm tell you what, he has such a quick jump that sometimes his route, watch his route. Starts back, now he's going to start to curl over, boom, make it. Didn't get the hop, but we got that. <laughs> Always something. I love it. Well, as we said the other night, excitement seems to find him wherever he goes. And he can't outrun excitement. No, no. He can outrun most, yep. but not excitement. And you can see how much he truly loves to play this game. And that is infectious. Rock Holt takes a pitch up. The count is one and one. Makes me want to loosen my tie, Dwayne. <laughs> a little early in the evening for that. Two outs with the bases empty. Two and one now. A miss. Two and two. And him out in front. Well, I, I tell you, Oda Rizzi has been so much fun to watch. And the development of this young pitcher coming to the Rays and getting all of those starts last year. That's a shot to right. That's going to be in there. Sousa trails it to the wall and holds on his way to third. He'll make this easily. with a triple his first one of those this year this is the first change up that we've seen hang and that ball just stayed right up there belt high and Brock Holt put a good swing on it got it down into the corner that plays deep out there and that's why he had three in mind the whole way you can see right here right field it 
goes from pesky pole to deep in a hurry. And Brock Holt not slowing up. Yeah, well, you saw out there just a matter of a few feet. It's 380. Xander Bogarts takes the pitch too low. One ball, no strikes. Bogarts hitting 262. It's a strike. It's three out of nine in his career against Jake. Now one and two. Go to Rizzi. Made 20 pitches in the first. He's at 16 here in the second. And he has cut that down as well. Coming into tonight's game, averaging just a little over 14 and a half pitches an inning. That's excellent. This one lined the other way, and it's going to drop for a base hit. And gets by Sousa, rolling down to the corner. Bogarts will go to third. Brian Butterfield. Stops him right there. I'll tell you what, Steven Sousa Jr. having a rough night out there. He had the, the, the fly ball by Dustin Pedroia that was dropped. The ball that hung up under the wall from Brock Holt. And then this one right here, Xander Bogarts gets a ball out over the plate, shoots it the other way. This is going to be a single here, or so you thought. That ball gets by Sousa again and starts rolling around the track. Another man on third. They gave him a triple. Wow. Okay. So Bogarts is at third. And here's the catcher, Sandy Leon. One ball, no strikes. It's a four to one ball game. The air button must be stuck. <laughs> Ground ball right side. Forsyth with the shift on takes care of that. So a run on a couple of hits and no error. It's four to one. Raise as we go to the third. Longoria leads it off. Hey guys, for Matt Moore in that live bullpen session against three race hitters, the news wasn't as good today for Alex Cobb. Cobb was planning to throw a black round session where he was going to throw breaking balls for the first time today. Unfortunately, that didn't happen. He was looked at by Dr. Coco Eaton, the team doctor, 
and we'll know more over the next two or three days. But Cobb did not throw his scheduled flat ground, and we'll know more hopefully by the end of this road trip, guys. Yeah, not good news at all to hear that because, uh, number one, Cobb's a guy you certainly root for, and the Rays want to see him back as soon as possible. And obviously everybody hoping that that the process of getting him back would proceed smoothly, but it has not. And so we'll anxiously await word over the next two or three days as to what comes out of this latest. Right now they're calling it a little setback, but it's a setback. And so we're all interested in seeing where that takes us next. I hate that news. Mm -hmm. Absolutely hate that news for Alex, for this team. You know, he had just gotten off the mound and was able, you know, to throw, what, 20 or 25 pitches, all fastballs. Felt great, things moving in the right direction. You're starting to envision what could this pet staff possibly look like when he comes back, as well as the starters have thrown the ball. Absolutely hate that news. Hope for the best. This pitch up and in to Longoria as he fouls it. That's around the handle. I might have hit him. Let's see. Up. Longoria thinks he's hit by a pitch. And now, oh, it hit him. Absolutely right off that foot. Very similar to what happened to Steven Sousa yeah, Jr. Um, Rays may win one. Well, yeah, they'll they'll have to get this looked at because Longoria was headed to first. Well, here's the thing, and if you can hold off long enough, yeah, it ricocheted forearm to bat. Here's the thing: you hold off long enough, and then you just go show him the brutes. You show him Rob Manfred's signature mm -hmm. on your forearm, and you're good to go, or not. Well, I, I, I think they're going to rule that he swung at that pitch. And it's going to be a strikeout. Hmm. Talk about a double whammy. You get hit and they call you for a strikeout swing. Brutal. We've had a lot of strange things happen in the first three innings of this game, including the way that at bat ended. Jesus rolls it out to Pedroia. So two up and two down. So the base is empty. Logan Forsyth will bat. Longoria out on strikes, hit by a pitch, but the indication was that he swung at it. Trip Gibson, who is working the plate, went down to Brian Gorman, the crew chief, who said that he went after it. So here's Forsyth, and he sends one deep to left field, and it's going to be high off the green monster. And into second base goes Forsyth with a double. He continues to swing a very good bat. What a, what a, a difference a year makes with Logan Forsyth, how decisive he is with his swings. Decisive, quick with his hands. You know, we talked at the beginning of the season, you know, Nick Franklin had the oblique injury, and so Logan Forsyth was going to get the bulk of the playing time out at second base against righties and lefties, and boy, has he delivered, playing tremendous defense and swinging a great bat. So scoring opportunity with two outs and here's Cabrera. Cabrera singled his first time getting on in front of the home run by Joey Butler.
up the right side, but it's going to be fouled. Nice play. A couple behind her, safe with her there. And she knows how to play the tight quarters down mm -hmm. the down the lines. Fly ball into right. That's going to drop. Forsyth will be held at third. Cabrera heads to second. The throw is not in time. And the Rays will get runners at second and third out of that base hit to right. Well, I think that as Drupal Cabrera was assuming that there was going to be a play on Logan Forsyth at second base. He drops his ball in front of Brock Holt, but he was charging with a full head of steam and air mailing. And then Cabrera's like, I got to hustle and get there. Forsyth getting the late hold. He's got to peel back. And Cabrera with a nice slide into second base as he hooks that left arm and keeps it on the bag. As it turned out, Leon had to come up the line to take the throw. No way you're going to know that as to where that throw's going to wind up. See Cabrera shaking his right hand there after dropping that base hit in front of Holt. Ray's going to hit with Forsyth in scoring position, but it does not score. The Rays tonight are now three for three with men in scoring position. How about that all of a sudden? Well, you, listen, this is a guy that we talked about. He came into the game with a 444 average against him in that situation, and has not let up, is not making quality pitches out of the stretch. Joey Butler. Next to strike Butler with his first major league home run on that off speed pitch and one pitch. And there's number one in the big leagues for Joey Butler. That shirt's still not signed. <laughs> tell you, he did a great job on that particular pitch of, of starting to go, recognizing off speed, keeping his hands back, and then just exploded into that baseball. That's the threat that he brings to this lineup. Two balls and a strike. Stairs. Well, the Rays got two in the first, two in the second. Boston a run in their second inning. And the Rays, with two outs, have another scoring opportunity. And Butler checked and draws the walk. Bases are now loaded. So the Rays with four homes so far off the Red Sox starting pitcher and that has been an issue a major issue for Boston this year with their rotation. Well the ERA second highest in the American League the walks runners in scoring position what that's led to is the Boston bullpen has thrown 92 innings so far this year that's just two outs behind the Texas Rangers for most innings thrown by a bullpen in Major League Baseball. And that cannot be sustained. They're loaded for Rene Rivera. Takes a cut and fouls it back. Strike one. And, and you know, Dwayne, you go back and look at this Red Sox slide. And it started in the game where they were in complete control against the Rays. Five to one or five to nothing lead. Joe Kelly's dealing. And all of a sudden, he comes out in the sixth inning, I think it was. And was a completely different pitcher. Right. And that's where the Rays came back, tied it, used Boxberger in the seventh, Jepson in the eighth, Geltz got the save, kind of went backwards to preserve that game. And since that game, the Red Sox, three and eight, 
and the numbers for the starters even worse than what we just saw. That started this tailspin. One and one to count. Yeah, that was the that was five to one, headed to the bottom of the sixth, and that's where Joe Kelly came out. Fourteen pitches, ten were balls, the other four were base hits. Now it's one and two. Logan Forsyth doubled with two outs, went to third on the base hit by Cabrera, who moved to second as the throw came through to the plate. And Butler walked to load the bases. And a look, uh, that pitch down and out of the zone, cutting out. Kevin Kiermaier hoping he'll get a chance to bat in the third. A 2 2 count on Rivera. In the dirt, that ball pops away, but the runners cannot advance, and the count is full. Boy, that's a big miss right there. Yep. That ball got away. From Sandy Leone. See Forsyth, that secondary lead, it just wasn't that anticipation. And by the time he thought about heading towards home, he almost was leaning back towards third, could not restart the engines. You see how far as Jubal Cabrera was headed to third. Foul out of play, forcing another 3 2 pitch. Three two pitch about to be made again. Another foul ball out of play. So the runners breaking with each of the last two pitches. Retrace their steps. Rays lead four to one. Third 3 2 pitch about to be made by Buckholz. And he strikes out Rivera. Rays will leave him loaded. Bottom of the third coming, still 4 to 1.
by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Grow Financial. Don't go through life, grow through life with Grow Financial Federal Credit Union. The Rays in Boston. With a 4-1 to lead moving into the bottom of the third. Mookie Betts top of the order leads off and the pitch is upstairs. One ball and no strikes. See him shorten on the bat and take ball two. Shot to left center field. Pretty well tagged. It's going to be off the wall. Bets on his way to second. It's his seventh double of the year. He put a charge into that one. Well, patient hitters, what they end up doing is working you long enough to get a pitch that is a mistake. And that was supposed to be a fastball away. It leaks over the middle. And Betts puts a charge into it. This is where Jake is really going to have to make some pitches because a little bit of a, you almost feel like a momentum swing. Even though the Rays have this game 4-1 to one right now, the way that Buck Holtz was able to get out of the last inning with the bases loaded and more opportunities for the Rays, and now a leadoff double. You don't want Boston to start chipping their way back in. You know, they put up a five spot in that game last night against the Yankees in the blink of an eye. Well, the leadoff double gets Pedroia to the plate. It's low, rolling in behind Rivera. No attempt at an advance. Pedroia with a double his first time. And it's 2 and 0. Oh. Four hits for the Red Sox. They have two doubles and two triples. The strange just keeps piling up. Toward left center. Kiermeyer is there to make the catch and a big cut by Pedroia. The Rays will take that out. Yes, they will because that was a pitch that was in Dustin Pedroia's wheelhouse. And he just missed it. That'll be David Ortiz. He got ahead of Ortiz one and two and then got him to chase a pitch up. Strike call. with four home runs and 12 runs batted in came into the game hitting 250 and the foul ball puts Ortiz up 0-2 470 home runs in his career but, you know, you look at those numbers. Four, David Ortiz has been a prolific power hitter for a long time. And then you think about Alex Rodriguez, 190 more than that. <laughs> Covered up by Rene Rivera. The split down, one and two. 
great example of Jake Odorizzi making this Boston lineup contend with the whole strike zone. Two strikes last time, climbing the ladder with the fastball. This time it's the it's the split change up below the zone. Will he do it again? Will he come up, change eye levels? He's in complete control of this count right now. And T's wondering the same thing. Again, stopped by Rene Rivera. And and this may be a situation here where Jake Odorizzi can use, usually it's the pitch up to change the eye level to make the pitch down more effective. How about two pitches down, get David Ortiz looking down, and now pop one again up near the letters. Well, they got him swinging up there the first time around. Count's going to go to three and two. Alan Craig on deck. He just got a piece of that one and stays alive. Off speed. Got a bit of Rivera as well. So another three two pitch to be made by Jay Coderizzi. One out with Betts on second. Ortiz fouls that fastball back. A little more on that one up around 93. And you can see how important this at bat and this upcoming pitch is. They've been working David Ortiz all over the zone. He's been able to get it out full, and now Rivera coming out with Jake. And, you know, these situations, you make a decision on what you want to do, what the pitch is going to be, and a lot of times the catcher goes back there, turns around, and just says, give it to me. You don't even need to give him a sign. Three, two, is skied to center. Kiermaier checks exactly where he is and on the track makes the catch. Betts heads to third and arrives ahead of the throw. So a drive to deep center. Caught by Kiermaier for the second out. That was a good battle there. Jake Odorizzi is able to win that even though Betts gets over to third. There's two outs. Retire the hitter and no harm, no foul. So an eight pitch at bat. To get Ortiz after Odorizzi got ahead of him, two strikes. Now Alan Craig will be up there for the second time. He entered the game when Ramirez left with a shoulder strain, a left shoulder strain, when he collided with the wall in foul territory in left field in the first inning. Craig takes a strike at the knees. A couple of times tonight, Odorizzi has used that curveball to start a sequence of pitches and get out in front with a strike. And he misses with the fastball a little bit wide. One and one. Against right handed hitters, he almost. He almost goes to that curveball for the first pitch of an at bat, one out of every four. Only throws it 6% of the time total, but almost a 
quarter of time on the first pitch, and we talked about it earlier. The hitters just aren't up there looking first pitch hook. You throw a good one, and you know you can throw a strike with it, immediately you're out ahead. Sandoval is on deck. Two outs for the man at third, and Craig has the count go to 2-2. Two -two. Well, I know the Red Sox were looking for a little bit more out of Alan Craig when they acquired him last summer, but it has been a struggle. And he strikes him out. Fastball gets him. Red Sox waste the leadoff double, leave a man at third. club the last few days the Astros red hot they have the night off but they've won 10 in a row and they're 11 games over 500 the best 25 game start in their history how about the 40 home runs how about not losing a game when they've had a lead in that game and here's the thing they have a seven game lead in the division here's Kiermaier Trying to bunt and miss. That's a strike. They, they're hitting home runs. Their pitchers aren't walking anybody. But when you look at their lineup, the lineup they ran out yesterday to extend their winning streak. How about this, though? Their number three hitter was hitting 204. Their cleanup hitter was hitting 198. And their number five hitter was hitting 159. And they have a seven game lead. The fly ball to right on the 0 2 pitch. Kiermaier is the first out. And there's young Todd Callis going back to his early days. Todd born in Houston when his Hall of Fame dad was on their broadcast crew. And Todd decked out in the old bursting star Astros uniforms. Tipping his hat to the crowd before mm -hmm. he digs into the box and goes yard. <laughs> and, you know, all this Astro love that we've been giving, you know, you know why this is pertinent to Ray fan? Because not only have they done everything that was on that graphic, but Dallas Keuchel, was able to eke out a victory over Chris Archer mm -hmm. for pitcher of the month in April. 
thought Chris Archer had that thing locked up. He sure did, it seemed. But Keiko's one of those guys not walking anybody, same way Archer had been. Yep. I think the the Souza lifts it down the right side and Holt runs out of room. He was gonna to try to climb into the stands. It's two and one. You need the ball girl. The ball girl knows how to play the short wall. Yep. Mm -hmm. She's shown that a couple times here on plays tonight. There's Chris Archer. And Chris finished with a 164 earned run average. We'll see him on the next home stand. Drew Smiley and Alex Colloway are going to pitch the next two games here in Boston. Souza takes ball three inside. James Loney on deck. Well, this Rays lineup, boy, they have made Clay Buckholtz work. In trouble, have had him in trouble every inning to now. And again, there's a walk. Well, it was all about getting base runners, giving yourself opportunities, putting Clay Buckholtz in the stretch where he has struggled mightily this year. And they got him back there. That'll be James Loney. I'll tell you something else. We, we talked about all the innings that the bullpen has thrown for the Red Sox. First game of a series. If you can dig deeper, this is a bullpen that had to work, you know, four and a third innings last night. Get them out there early again. Keep running that pitch count up. Only scored the first run of this game. He looks at a breaking ball for a strike. Again, over to first on Sousa. Rays and the Red Sox going at it here at Fenway. Yankees and the Blue Jays scoreless in the bottom of the sixth in Toronto. There goes Sousa. The throw down is in time. He is caught stealing for the third time this year. And out number two in the fourth. Well, we know he likes to go. Had 26 steals last year in AAA and off and running. Boy, really nice job by Sandy Leone. That's, uh, I'll tell you what, let's see where the feet are. The tag's up near the chest. Was the foot on the bag early? You almost want to take a look at this one, yeah, I think. I think the Rays do. Yep. Watch the left foot. Coming into the bag, tough to see there, but the tag is at the chest, and from that angle, yeah, from you could see where he could get in there. Yep, it's at a and then we got we got to look from the outfield looking in, maybe your best shot at it because those two would probably be inconclusive. The Rays have yet to prevail <laughs> in one of these challenges. Yeah, it's not going well. Oh boy. This has inconclusive written all over it. <laughs> well, if you've got the opportunity and you figure, why not give it a go? Because it would be a man in scoring position here. We've had some very quick ones recently. 
So it's always a good sign if they're taking a little time. If this goes the Rays way, and I actually don't think that it will, but if it does, does Kevin Cash just rip the hat off, throw it in the stands, and start celebrating madly? <laughs> I mean, he was 0 for April. 0 for into May. Well, we're going to find out here. Yep. Oh. Well. One of these days, the Rays are going to prevail, but not tonight. The call stands, so nothing that could be conclusive there enough to overturn it. And that's what we're finding out. If it's going to be overturned, it has to be, I mean, black and white. And that was so close. Well, <laughs> what are you going to do? Throw your hands up. Go get them next time. In fact, I think that that really, they ought to just have a bottle of champagne kept in the dugout for that first time that the Rays are able to win a challenge. You pop it right in during the middle of the game. So I guess going back into last year, what are they, 0 for 12 now? Yeah. 0 for 11 this year. Loney is out on strikes. We're going to head into the bottom of the fourth. 4 to 1, Tampa Bay. the Rays all season in 2015 with MLB.com at bat. The number one app for live baseball at bat is up to the moment. At any moment with in-game highlights, live look-ins, replay reviews, and more. So get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Good cut and a miss by Pablo Sandoval. Rizzi got ahead of him and then got him looking on a fastball away in the second inning. And he's ahead of him again, 0 2. Swinging over that split. And ball to two strikes. He's got a couple in the first, a couple in the second. Lost in a run in their second. Sandoval lays off the pitch high. A little bit outside, two and two. It's out of play. Napoli next, and then Holt.
Tap right side. That's going to stay fair. Loney takes it back to the bag to get Sandoval. Did you see how James Loney attacked that ground ball, thinking that maybe he was going to end up hooking foul or rolling foul, and he didn't even want to give it an opportunity. So attack that baseball, get it while it's still fair, and record that out. Watch him charge this thing right away. He wants to get to it as it starts to roll. Get it in front of the bag, and there, take your out. Well, Sandoval was out in front of the uh, changeup, had a little spin on that ball toward the line, and so Loney, very much aware of that possibility, got there quickly. Mike Napoli. High foul ball. Down near the corner. That ball is and caught. How about that? De Jesus, I'll tell you, that was not an easy catch. He ran down into the corner. The ball appeared to be headed into the seats, and he never gave up on it. We thought it was Loney's play, Dwayne, but could this be the one? Look at this. So difficult. I mean, look at the foul territory. The, the, the high wall in <laughs> The reaction says it all. Yeah, he's fired up. How about that? It's a veteran that knows how to play the left field corner here. <laughs> oh, yeah. No kidding. I'll tell you. Get the crash cart ready. It's almost it. That's almost an impossible play on a ball hit like that. You know, you're not diving all over the place, but that is a tough play. And De Jesus stayed with that and pulled off the near impossible. Well, to maintain concentration, this ball hits so high and so close to that wall. See a foul ball there just across the line. He was straddling the line when he caught it, the ball foul. Wow. Well, from our vantage point up here, we lost sight of it. You get down into that corner and you can't see. All the fans down there thought it was going to be a souvenir. They were looking for a ball in the stands there, foul territory. Well, now there's one into the corner, and he's going to have to play the carom. And then the second goes Holt with his second head of the night. And here's the other thing. That that pop-up down the line, that, that could have almost fallen at fair territory. Mm -hmm. I yeah. mean, that really could have, you know, if he doesn't catch that, there's a chance. The fact that it came back at all was mystifying in a way. Yep. Brock Holt doing what he does. A pitch away from him. He does get it down into the corner fair. So a man in scoring position. He comes with two gone. Xander Bogarts takes a strike. Two Red Sox now with five hits. They've all been extra base hits. Three doubles, two triples. Just a little bit of that piece, that pitch to make it foul. And that, that's not bad, too, for a team that came into play tonight with the fewest doubles in the American League, if you can believe that. As much as they're known for their power, have been known for their power. And especially in this ballpark. Yeah. Holt and Bogarts who had back to back triples in the second. Cut the miss. 
He's out on strikes. That will retire the side. A fastball up. Got him. Onto the fifth. Four to one range. is tonight's great moment in race history presented by Geico. It was on this day last year, 2014, when Will Myers hit a three-run inside the park home run, becoming just the first visiting player with a grand slam and an inside the park home run at the new Yankee Stadium. And here at Fenway tonight, here go to Rizzi and Clay Buckholtz going at it with the Rays holding a three run lead. Evan Longoria ready to lead off the fifth. Buckholtz drives it outside. One ball, no strikes. Buckholtz, his last time out against the Blue Jays. Tuesday gave up five runs, four earned in two and two thirds. Beginning the fifth inning right now. Two and one. Guide to left. Craig makes the catch. One away. Raised with four runs, seven hits. And again tonight. The key has been getting men on base and getting Buckholtz into the stretch. They're four of seven when he's pitching out of the stretch. David De Jesus takes a strike. He drove in a run back in the first inning. To the count. Short stop, Bogarts. Two up, two down in the fifth. 
get in on the action with exclusive on field seating in the Papa John's bullpen box. Host your group of 50 to 85 in this private party area and make long lasting memories. Reserve the Papa John's bullpen box by contacting group sales at 888 fan rays or emailing group sales at raysbaseball.com. Limited dates remain. Logan Forsythe doubled off the wall his last time. Takes a strike this time around. Logan now with eight doubles. That was average over 300. A complete turnaround from the way he started last year. Last year it seemed from time to time as the, the swing you know wasn't as decisive kind of feeling for the baseball trying to get in the comfort zone with a new team but you're right night and day and he has taken this opportunity and run with it well there's the comparison from one year to the next that might be better than night and day <laughs> Three balls and a strike. And I think, you know, part of that is more comfortable in his surroundings, more comfortable in his game, but he's getting out there and playing all the time. You know, last year it was sporadic early on. A lot of platoon type situations with Logan, but now he's getting a lot of playing time, consistent playing time. He's cashing in. Lines it into center, has another hit. Vets makes the pickup on one hop. Well, they'll send Buckholtz into the stretch again. How about how quick the hands were to be able to stay inside this pitch by Buckholz, trying to come in. Look at that. Right quick to the baseball. He gets the barrel there. Boy, that is nice. Really nice. In the middle of the field. I don't usually get excited over a single like that, but that was really nice. Mm -hmm. And now is Drupal Cabrera who has a couple of hits. There's two for two, snapping it over 14. Fly ball back to right, and Holt there waiting. The Rays retired in the fifth. Bottom of the inning coming, and the Rays lead four to one. Well, you have a Longoria's walk-up song from your very own home with the Evan Longoria walk-up music bobblehead presented by Sun Sports. 
When the Rays play the Rangers Saturday, May 9th, all fans receive an Evan walk-up music bobblehead while supplies last. Go to 888-FAN-RAYS or RaysBaseball.com for tickets. First pitch to Sandy Leone is a strike off speed. Leone doing the catching. And now he bunts third base side against the shift. And it's foul. 0-2. How about this? The the Darth B.A. That is a man looking to take someone down. Angry, an angry, angry man. Well, it's Star Wars night here, and that uh, Darth B.A., what a great idea. That right there is the single greatest villain in the history of (laughs) movies. We've talked about it before. In fact, I think we talk about it every time there's a a, a Star Wars night somewhere. And the Rays are going to have one in September. But I'm telling you right now, he's the the greatest villain of all time. And you got the voice of James Earl Jones. You win. (laughs) Nicely done. Routine right there by a young lady down the right side. Still the ball, two strikes. Top of the order, Mookie Betts will be next. It would appear, well, there's a foul ball. It would appear that Leon and Blake Swihart, the young catcher, split time now behind the plate. Ryan Hannigan lost to a, a fracture on his right hand. He's had surgery on that. A swing and a miss. And that was some split right there to get Leon. so much confidence in that pitch to be able to throw it out over the plate and trust that the change of speed and the late movement on it will take it below the swing of the hitter. Fifth strikeout for Oda Rizzi. First out in the fifth. And a first pitch strike taken by Mookie Betts. That picture that they put up of me, the yes. SBA, mm-hmm. that picture was taken on the flight back to Tampa from New York. And I was just about to go swinging at my iPad. <laughs> but had it. Hmm. Looked it into shallow right center. Here comes Kiermeyer. Two gone. I think they ought to consider that. That, that, that. that would be a great item. The Darth B.A. for real? Yeah. Well, the only reason that I would even endorse that at all is because he's my favorite movie villain. Mm-hmm. So yep. to even be in the same sentence. Look at that. Yep. I mean, who wouldn't want that sitting on the... I, I know a lot of people <laughs> that wouldn't. And all the places you could use to decorate... The house with that? If you had one of those rooms, maybe, (laughs) but not anywhere else. We have actually seen that in action life size, though. (laughs) Just the other few days ago. (laughs) There could be a whole line that we could mark it. One and two, the count on Dustin Pedroia. Oda Rizzi hasn't walked anybody. He's given up the one run on the back to back triples to Holt and Bogarts in the second. And did he go? Yes, he did. That's going to take care of Pedroia. He didn't like it. But the crew chief, Brian Gorman, says he's out. 
And so the Red Sox are up and down one, two, three. John Farrell out to plead his case with Trip Gibson. 4 1 Rays. He lifted this one down the left field line, and that resulted in Hanley Ramirez suffering a sprained left shoulder. Longoria wasted a little time driving in Loney. And then David DeJesus hit this shot past Pedroia. You think this is a fast game out there? That made it two to nothing, and then Joy Butler in the second hit his first big league home run to make it four nothing. Red Sox got a run in their second. It's four to one as we go to the sixth, and Butler takes a strike off a breaking pitch from Buckholtz. Butler fouls this one. He's down 0 2. Butler had 12 at bats in the big leagues. With Texas in 2013 and five at bats with the Cardinals last year. And one RBI and picks up his first big league home run here tonight. Two strikes. And he's out on strikes. Colts retires the leadoff hitter here in the sixth. Buckholtz trying to settle in here and give his offense an opportunity to come back. This breaking ball right here. Butler just runs out of bat as that ball sweeps away. Rene Rivera is nothing of two. It's a ball. Well, the Rays were opportunistic early in building that quick 4 0 lead, setting the tone for this game. Well, the Rays had struggled with men in scoring position. Red Sox had had their own issues recently with men in scoring position. And Rivera's down in the count. But a fine line for the Rays and Kevin Cash here. The first month of the season with all the injuries 
and the offensive struggles. The pitching has been outstanding, and they've played very steady defensively behind the arms. And they've had to because, you know, the, the Rays, 25 games they've played coming into tonight, and in almost half, 12 of the 25 games, they've scored two or fewer runs. And they've actually won five of those. So you're talking about razor-thin margin. And they've had to do this while already using 19 pitchers this season. It's a month old this season. 19 pitchers. They've used the, the most coming out of the bullpen. 19 total. They've used 37 different players. Which is another astounding figure. Rivera chases the high fastball. So he's out on strikes. And tonight's cold hard facts brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. And here's another one. The most rookies used. 12. The Rays topping that list. In fact, those 19 pitchers we mentioned, they average just over 27 years of age, the youngest going. And 12 rookies the Rays have used. There's a curveball and a strike call to Kiermaier. Yeah, the inexperience, the roster turnover, everything that's going on, it really is something that they're sitting right now where they are as far as the record goes. Could be much worse. And to give you an idea again how razor thin it can be, the Rays coming into this game tonight averaging 3.64 runs per game. There are 10 major league teams averaging four runs or under. And the Rays and the Mets are the only teams with winning records with under four runs per game. Rays at 3.64 and the Mets at 3.88. Kiermaier out in front of the changeup. It was up there and then it was gone. Well, and, and listen, Buckholz has a very good changeup and he's not afraid to use it in just about any count there is. And he strikes out the side. Back-to-back change-ups. Bottom of the sixth coming. Four to one raise. Fenway with Ortiz due to lead it off. This one's coming up tomorrow on Rays Live, the pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda dealers. Drew Smiley. We'll hear from Drew Smiley, the Rays lefty. He'll be the 
Ray starting pitcher tomorrow and Arrestus will break down the career of Big Poppy who leads off the bottom of the sixth and pops it up. Forsyth out of the shift in shallow right and he drops it. And Ortiz is aboard. Ortiz barely made it to first. And Forsyth out there in short right to begin with moving toward right center. Well, let's take a look at it. He's over in the shift. That's an awkward, well, he's just, you know what, he caught, just got caught drifting, that's all. You, know, you were kind of wondering where the outfielders were, but Logan Forsyth was already back there, and David Ortiz, who's just completely quit on this play. Well, wouldn't that have been great if they'd have fired him out at first? So the Rays commit their first error. Alan Craig fouls it off the front of the Rays dugout. Strike one. And the Rays came into play with just. They score that a hit. Okay. Really? Wow. There, maybe errors don't exist anymore. Not tonight. My goodness. Good for Logan. Line drive, and it's just off the glove of Cabrera in the left. It's going to be a play at second. He is safe to call. And the Rays jumping up and down over that one. And no challenge, and it's not the seventh inning yet. The Rays have already used their challenge. It didn't work out, and now Kevin Cash is going to come out and argue, but there's nowhere to go on this. You can't ask him to take a look, I don't think, until the seventh inning. play. Wanted to get him at first, almost got him at second. And I can't really see when the ball went into the glove. This ball, David Ortiz pulls up thinking maybe it's going to be caught by Cabrera, but then David DeJesus alertly fires that ball in. Boy, is that close. So it's first and second with nobody out and Pablo Sandoval. Ground ball right side. Forsyth second one. First base two. They get the double play. What? I'm going to tell you something. That, that play, that turn was awesome. Logan Forsyth, his inside turn to feed that ball to Cabrera was so quick and he put so much oomph into the throw to get it there in a hurry. Trying to turn this against the left-handed hitter. And boy, he put some hair on it. And Cabrera, a great turn. Nice job by the Rays middle infield. So from first and second with nobody out, the Rays go to two outs with a man at third. And the hitter is Mike Napoli. It's Sedanio, the left-hander. Frieri, the right-hander. And the Rays bullpen. Big double play turned by the Rays. And a cut and a miss. Napoli, who had been taking breaking balls to start his first two at bats, got a fastball there and missed it. Strike one. Pitch wide. One and one. Slider out there. Now two balls and a strike. Three and one, a couple of misses here. And it, a couple of times, the last two pitches, really, Jake Odorizzi just kind of overthrowing a little bit. He's trying to get something on these. 
pitches to get out of this inning. You know, he's been in trouble a couple of times. The, the Red Sox have been able to get a runner into scoring position one time at second, one time at third. But to his credit, he's made the pitches when they've counted. That's what's allowed the Rays to keep this three-run lead. You got to do it one more time. 3-1 to Napoli. He lifts it into short right. Sousa Jr. makes the catch to retire the side. No runs. Two hits, one left. We go to the seventh, 4 1. guys brought up an interesting subject earlier about with Sousa scuffling right now, would he get a day off? Well, it certainly has been discussed, and here's the situation. Kevin Cash and the coaching staff wouldn't mind seeing Sousa Jr. get a day off here in Boston, but with Desmond Jennings on the DL, you don't have that option of playing Des in center and Kiermaier in right. So your options for right are Joey Butler, who hasn't played a lot out there at the major league level, or David DeJesus or Brandon Geyer, and they haven't played a whole lot of right for the Rays. Now, Sousa has had a share of trouble in right again tonight, but at least they feel comfortable with him out there. So that's the issue. They're talking about it, guys, because it has been a struggle lately for Steven at the plate. Well, Sousa Jr. leading off the seventh inning, and it has been an unsure night for him in right field as he tries to snap a hit the streak. And there it is, a base hit and a left. Sousa Jr., a leadoff single here in the seventh. That will snap an 0 for 18 for Steven Sousa. A little smile there now. He's aboard to lead off the seventh. I don't know who is more excited for this single, Sousa Jr. or you. <laughs> I mean, I got excited about Forsyth going back up the middle, but I'll tell you what, you were. That was yeah, good. There you go. Asking for the ball. <laughs> Or given the claw, not sure. Yeah. Well, he's on base for the third time, but there's a base hit. And nice to find a base hit to lead off the inning for Sousa Jr. Now here's James Loney. Be careful. Sousa caught stealing back in the fourth. The race challenged that, and uh, the call ruled uh, as it was made. The call stands. I don't know. Good take by Loney on the pitch down. The right-hander 
Junichi Tazawa throwing in the bullpen. Buckholtz over 100 pitches, working to his second hitter in the seventh. Tapper, that's going to be a fair ball, and Loney's thrown out at first. Susan Jr. moves into second. Worked out like a bunt, really. Puts a man in scoring position for Evan Longoria. Raised three out of four with men in scoring position tonight. And John Farrell comes out. He's going to make a pitching change. Six and a third tonight for Buck Holtz, and we'll return after this. out here in the seventh inning and Evan Longoria do up join Evans miles from Moffat race team team long ago to help raise money for life-saving research at Moffat Cancer Center sign up and receive a free team long ago t-shirt while supplies last miles from Moffat race day is Saturday May 9th learn more or sign up by visiting miles from Moffat.com slash team logo Junichi Tozawa replaces Clay Buckholtz. He'll be ready to swing the bat. 13th appearance, 11 and two thirds innings, 11 strikeouts, just one walk. Longoria doubled in a run back in the first inning. Evan one for three tonight. First pitch way high and a snap throw back to second, diving back in safely, Sousa. You know, what was interesting when John Farrell made the pitching change, usually when Tazawa would come in, he'd hand him the ball, off he goes. John Farrell spent few extra moments out there talking to everybody on the mound and you wonder if that was not a, a cold play right there. Borderline pitch out throw behind the runner at second base. Pitch up again 2 and 0. Oh. Got a young guy out there who's aggressive. Aggressive base runner. Maybe you catch him in a secondary lead. Maybe they've seen something with him and his secondary lead getting a little bit long. And take a shot. And a 
strike. And Souza can be a distraction out there. Well, he's really trying to give it to Tozawa too. Getting his lead, faking like he's gonna go. Just trying to give you something to think about. And more, it's three and one to Evan. A little bit more tame on that pitch than he was on the previous. But you're right, he has been super active back there. And that's probably something that the Boston you know, coaching staff ha has seen. And so listen, if you want to jump off the bag, then we're going to have something for you. Try to catch you leaning. 11, one of 11 in his career against Tozawa. That hit a double. Ahead three and one now, and he takes ball four. So with those numbers, John Farrell brought Tozawa in to face Evan, and he walks him. And the only one walk coming in by Tozawa. Good job by Evan to not chase those borderline pitches. Those typically don't go well for you. David DeJesus. Zeus drove in a run with a hot shot base hit past Pedroia in the first. It's now one and one. Zawa took the loss here at Fenway Friday night in the Yankee series after allowing a tie-breaking pinch hit home run to Alex Rodriguez, which turned out to be number 660. And Jesus fouls that one back, holding the count at a ball and two strikes. Tozawa talk it over. It has been a four to one game since the second inning. The Rays with two men on and one out in the seventh. No pitch time called. Granted by Trip Gibson. This is all stemming from Souza Jr. out at second base. You see how many times Tazawa is looking back at him because of all the jockeying. And finally, David DeJesus was like, enough. I've been standing here in my batting stance long enough. It's getting uncomfortable. And he was granted late time. Back again. Another fastball in the mid 90s from Tazawa. And Logan Forsyth is on deck. Again, two and two. The Jesus broke a hitless streak in the first. Three of the four hitters who had hitless streaks going have snapped those tonight. Souza here in this inning with a base hit. The Jesus 
with a single in the first. Cabrera has two hits tonight. Two, two and a ground ball. Right side going to slip through. Suja Jr. is going to be waved around. The throw by Holt up the line and not in time. And the Rays get a run. Base hit for De Jesus, his second of the night. He drives in another run. And Souza Jr., who was trying to take as many liberties as he could at second base, scored easily, as it turns out, on the base hit by De Jesus. Well, you know what he was doing? He was being paid so much attention by Tazawa that Tazawa started rushing his delivery in the last couple of pitches. How many have been up in the zone? And you got an off speed pitch up, and De Jesus rips it in the hole. And adds another run. Part of the credit to that play right there goes to, to Souza Jr. for being a pest out at second base. A strike up in the zone to Logan Forsythe. How about this tonight? The Rays now four for five with men in scoring position tonight. Boston one of ten. Two. Sousa's leadoff base hit has been converted into a run. All two strikes. Zawa ahead in the count. Put away out of the zone. Five runs charged to Buckholz tonight. Foresight doubled off the wall and left in the third. He singled the center in the fifth. In and it's two and two. Blue Jays have beaten the Yankees three to one. Murray Dickey gets his first win of the year. Blue Jays scored three in the eighth to win that game three to one. Upstairs three and two. And by the way, the Astros are playing tonight. They're home against Texas, and they're leading one to nothing at the end of five. Keuchel is pitching that game. There you go. How's that? So they're leading one to nothing. Well, with Keuchel on the mound, that game's over. <laughs> they got their one. They're after their 19th win. They're 18 and seven. And ball four. So the Rays have now loaded the bases and all those runners put on by Tazawa. Two walks and a single in the middle. As Drupal Cabrera is due up. Tazawa has completely come out of his mechanics. Everything rushing towards home plate. All these pitches up. Joey Butler homered in the second inning and in tonight's game and all season long tires plus donates a hundred dollars to the pediatric cancer foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. 
Ruble Cabrera will be the hitter. Joey Butler follows him in the order. Rays have a run here in the seventh. One out and the bases are loaded. Cabrera tonight, two for three. And again, he's upstairs with that pitch. Just not able to make that adjustment, and that is a very lonely and bad place to be. You know what you need to do, and you're just not able to do it. After the fastball. Well, if you're a raise hitter now, you're looking for something elevated in your zone, not up above the zone, but something out there around the belt. Two balls and a strike. And it's tough to do in this kind of a situation, but a lot of times a good veteran catcher will try to force you to glove side with a fastball because what that does is force you to have to reach way out there, and sometimes that can get you right back into your mechanics. When you keep going arm side, that ball has a tendency to stay up and away. And there's strike two. Overcorrection right there. <laughs> and that's what it is. That Tazawa's just trying to find it. Now he's trying to go away and he yanked that pitch down and in and this is just okay I know need to know or know that I need to get it out there and hold on to the ball a little bit longer that was too long pitch popped up left side Sand the ball out there, the ball fair, and it's caught by Bogarts. Well, they almost collided on that one. Well, that right there, that had all the makings of a ball dropping in because both players drifting, drifting. Sandoval's route was interesting, and you could just see as you drift, you're in trouble. And Bogarts able to avoid disaster and get that glove up above Sandoval's. And then get out of the way yeah, right. of the Red Sox third baseman. Flattened by a panda. Here's Joey Butler facing Tozawa. Upstairs. What an know. with a homer and a walk struck out his last time and he takes ball two ahead in the count he's now with five runs and ten hits Up the right side, and it's just foul. But she knocked it down. <laughs> See, and when you're on the right side of the infield, that's all you got to do. Yeah, you got time. Knock it down, make a play. That was a rocket shot, not even phased. count even at 2 2. It's the first quality pitch down in the zone that Tazawa has been able to make his entire outing. Well, 
Ground ball. That's headed to second. Pedroia. The Bogarts for the force. We head into the bottom of the seventh. 5-1 Tampa Bay. Moonlight here at Fenway. Five to one. Rays lead moving into the bottom of the seventh. Tonight's game summary brought to you by Golden Diamond Source. Joey Butler's first big league home run. Part of the Rays offense tonight. Brock Holt leads off the bottom of the seventh inning. Jake Odorizzi working the front six and opening the seventh here. Holt Takes the change up for ball one. Holt is two for two. There's a strike. Trieri up in the bullpen. Inside. Holt, Bogarts, and then Leon do up. He on the verge of a hundred pitches, and here it is. That's a strike. So he squares the count to Holt. Oh. A full count, three and two. Into left, the Jesus is there to make the catch, and that was not an easy play. That ball had some slice to it off the bat of Holt. Well, so yeah, absolutely slice, and, and he hit that hard, harder than the one that he got down for a double. And so David De Jesus got to quickly get back towards the green monster and make this play. Caught it out of bounds though. Bogarts takes the first pitch strike, triple in a run in the second. On what really should have been a single. And he scored a triple. So he's one for two. Fly ball into left. De Jesus after this one. 
two gone. Two up, two down in the seventh. Sandy Leone will bat with two gone and the base is empty. Switch hitting catcher. Rays put the shift on for him. One and oh. Two balls and a strike. <laughs> two and two. Oh, to Rizzi. Again on 110 pitches. This is his high pitch count of the season. He's gone over 100 twice coming into this game, topping out at 103. Right back into center for Kiermaier, and it's a 1 2 3 seventh inning. On to the eighth. Rays lead 5 1. Fifteen percent or more on car insurance. Visit us at Geico.com or call one eight hundred nine four seven auto. And by courtesy Toyota, you'll love what we do for you. Breslow is going to be the new pitcher, the third of the night for the Boston Red Sox. Mark holds for six and a third, all five runs charged to his account. Dazal with two thirds of an inning, and now Breslow with Rene Rivera about to step in. Rivera all for three tonight. Pitch is a strike.
That's foul. And it's 0-2. Rays trying to pull to within two games of the Yankees. And the Rays in Baltimore started the day three back of New York. The Yankees have lost. The Orioles are idle. And so if the Rays can reserve this lead and win it, they would be two back with Baltimore two and a half back. Ball, two strikes. About what you'd expect in this division. Everybody playing each other. And I don't know about you, partner, but I'm I'm about done with the AL East. <laughs> I mean, we it's just it's been constant, and it's always fun. The games are always competitive. I get it, but I'd like to kind of move on and see some other teams. Well, you'll be happy to know that after this series, the Rays go home to play the Texas Rangers. Wonderful. But then they get to play the Yankees see? again. And then it rains on the parade. Back into the east. Rivera reaching, pops it up. Pedroia calls off Napoli. And that is out number one of the eighth. Game two tomorrow, and the starter is presented by Chevron. Drew Smiley will make the start for the Rays, his third start. Rick Porcello on the hill for Boston. He's two and two, making his sixth start. Major addition to their staff so far, 534 earned on average. Here's Kiermeyer chopping it out to second, grabbed by Pedroia. Two outs here against Breslow. Steven Souza Jr. He's been on base three times, hit by a pitch. He walked and then singled, struck out his first time. Well, and you hope that he can just exhale now after that long hit in the streak. You know that was weighing on the young right fielder's mind. But you get that base hit, you hit it hard, and now, okay, let's go back and play some baseball. Let off the inning, turned into a run. There's one headed toward the corner. He'll make the turn at first and go to second. Craig plays the carom. So back to back hits for Souza. Single in the seventh. And a double in the eighth. Well, and we may have given him the night off. That's why we're up here, <laughs> or at least why I'm up here. <laughs> Turned out to be a pretty good night so far. Yes, sir. He got a mistake again, and he makes Breslow pay. Hustling out of the box. Getting into second base. Let's see if he goes to work on Breslow like he did with Tazawa. Trying to be a distraction out there to a pitcher that's trying to keep him at bay, keep him close to second base, and oh, by the way, make quality pitches to a hitter. Well, the best way to snap a hitless streak is to reach base four times in a row, and that's what Sousa has done tonight. He finds it fun out there. Ball one to James Loney. Good job, but he missed it. One and one. Two balls and a strike. Rays have led throughout the evening. They got two in the first, two in the second. Austin got a run in the second. The Rays got one in the seventh. They 
play the post game tonight. Coming up on Rays Live, the post game presented by Checkers. Richard Arrest has anchored the coverage. We'll have the press conference from Kevin Cash and Todd Callis. We'll have interviews from the clubhouse. Fly ball lifted into left. Alan Craig calls it and catches it. We go to the bottom of the eighth with the Rays leading five to one. Jay Cota Rizzi, tonight's high def highlights presented by H.H. H. Gray. Well, two starts here at Quint Fenway Park and not a whole lot of success, but it's a different Jay Cota Rizzi. The Red Sox have not seen this Jay Cota Rizzi in this building, and you're right, he was very good. And once again, and this is going to be his MO every time he goes out there, he's going to work that whole strike zone. He did it again tonight, and he did it very effectively. Now he'll give way to right-hander Ernesto Frieri. And he'll face the top of the order. Mookie Betts leads it off. And he takes the pitch. One ball, no strikes. Eleventh appearance by Frieri. It's one and one. Two and one. We'll appeal down to Brian Gorman. He says the hitter held up. Freire worked an inning in the Baltimore series Saturday, his most recent outing. And he pitched a one, two, three, seventh. In relief of Chris Archer. It's two and two with Betts. Shortstop Cabrera makes the throw. One away here in the eighth. So Cabrera there at shortstop. Cabrera quietly has been a steadying influence at short. He's the only shortstop in the major leagues to start. 20 or more games and not make an error this season. Pedroia taking a pitch away. One ball, no strikes. And I'm sitting over here thinking to myself, I didn't even know where you were going with that, but I'm sitting over here thinking, how solid has he been? Mm -hmm. He just makes all the plays. Yep. Always good with his throws. 
guess those numbers back that up. Well, he had maintained in the spring that he could still play shortstop, wanted to play shortstop, and has been as steady as you could ask anybody to be. And I think it's true. He, he's not going to have the greatest range, but he does what you're supposed to do out there. And, you know, Dwayne, I, I agree, and I think that with the way that the Rays deploy their shifts and their defensive set, even when they're not shifting, I think that's a great they point. put him in the right spots. And they have a pitching staff that can pitch to the scouting report and get the desired results. So he doesn't have to have that blow you away range. Just be solid. Make all the plays. We'll make sure that you're in the right spot. Now, that's not foolproof. It's not 100%, but more times than not, he'll be where he's supposed to be, and if he is, he's going to make the play. Yeah. In fact, the Rays are the only team in the majors without an error completely at shortstop. Whoever's been there. That will roll foul. So Pedroia will return to the plate. And, and to think that the Rays season started with an error. How about Opening that? day. <laughs> first yeah. play. Chris Archer. Right, they, this is an organization that prides itself on its ability to catch the baseball, to go get it, play good defense, and support good pitching. Freire to try the 3-2 again to Pedroia. And he lost it. First walk given up by Ray's pitching. Oda Rizzi made 110 pitches tonight with six strikeouts and no walks. Walk here. Tonight at 11, Fox Sports Live will get you caught up on all the NBA and NHL playoff action. See it live at 11 p.m on Fox Sports 1 or see a simulcast right here on Fox's Sun Sports following the postgame show. Ortiz shortens on the bat taking the pinch and that's ball one. And a big congratulations out to the Lightning for their great showing in Montreal. Two up there in that building. How about dropping a six spot on him oh, oh, oh. in the game yesterday? To the backstop and down to second base goes Pedroia. Now Rivera had absolutely no shot on that. Frieri just completely yanks this pitch, trying to overthrow it to David Ortiz and through the wickets, Trip Gibson. Gibson out of Mayfield, Kentucky. 33 years old. Kevin Jepson up in the bullpen for the Rays. This one to left, De Jesus reaching the track. Two gone. Pedroia still at second base with two outs. For Alan Craig, the hitter. Craig entered the game when. Hanley Ramirez was injured. He departed with a left shoulder sprain. Craig tonight is one for three. He's single in the sixth. That's a strike. Strike again. 
Very working, Craig, in the lower regions of the strike zone. Freire strikes out Craig. He missed that one by plenty. We go to the ninth. Rays lead 5-1. Meatball sub, pick yours two for five bucks, and buy your Gulf Coast Honda dealer. From Fenway Park tonight, the opening game of this three-game series finds the Rays moving into the ninth inning and leading this game five to one. Craig Breslow, 34-year-old lefty on the hill. And Evan Longoria will lead off against the lefty. Pitch is a strike. David DeJesus due to hit next. As you see, Ramirez up in the bullpen for the Rays. And Brandon Geyer has moved into the on-deck circle. A cut and a foul ball right back, 0-2. Here's Geyer who will hit next. Two strikes. Ray's got all five of their runs off the starter Buckholtz. Betts in short center handles that one. One out in the ninth. And now it will be Geyer to hit for DeJesus. David DeJesus, while he was in there, played an outstanding left field and snapped an 0 for 17 with a 2 for 4 and 2 RBI night. So, nice job by David DeJesus tonight. Well, he continues to produce whatever the Rays call upon him to do so. He's been getting a lot more playing time now. His ability to work good at bats and showed you what he could do in the field tonight. Some very difficult plays. 
Pitch turned over by Breslow on the changeup. Had Geyer reaching 0 2. Ball and two strikes. Working him away, ran that one right in as he started to step into that pitch. Clubs beginning their second series against each other this year. Dyer fouls it again. Morgan Forsyth will be next. Rays have scored five runs on 11 hits. They've drawn four walks tonight. Joey Butler hit his first big league home run. That's going to be a foul ball just outside the line back a third. Boy, that would have been quite an at bat by Geyer jumping out or jumping back in the count down early, fighting off some pitches. New bat. Popped up. Pedroia waits for this one. Two gone. Two outs, bases empty. And here's the Yellowwood bringing the lumber brought tonight by Joey Butler in the first inning when he hit a changeup out of here over the Green Monster. We stayed back nicely and put a charge. How about that? First big league home run, Fenway Park over the Green Monster. How you feeling tonight? And a shot like that early when the Rays had scored two in the first, you put a couple more on the board in the second, you start feeling a little bit better about things. Forsyth skies it to the right side. Pedroia out making the call and the catch in right field. And we're headed into the bottom of the ninth inning at Fenway Park with the Rays leading four to one, five to one.
Braves have led throughout the evening. Brandon Geyer stays on to play left field. After pitch hitting for David DeJesus and Erasmo Ramirez is on, making his seventh appearance for the Rays. Ramirez pitched an inning and a third in the final game of the Baltimore series yesterday. He will face Pablo Sandoval to lead it off. Well, and you thought that the DJ Kitty hats were aggressive. <laughs> First pitch in there, a strike, a fastball. How about that? A panda fan, without question. Tap foul off the changeup. Fastball changeup, and the count is 0 2. Too low, one and two. Out to second and Forsyth throws out Sandoval. It's one away in the bottom of the ninth inning as the Rays try to take the first game of this series. Mike Napoli walks toward the plate. Napoli with a couple of hits. He's two for three in his career against Ramirez. 0 oh for three tonight. The ball, no strikes. Boxberger loosening in the bullpen. And he gets a strike call. Two and two. It's interesting watching Rene Rivera trying to coach Ramirez through Napoli here after he missed with a couple of changeups, has been better with the fastball. He's telling him where he wants it. Look at him, just give it to me. Ground ball and position perfectly. Forsyth throws a strike to first. So they had the shift on for Napoli, and he hit it right to Forsyth. I love watching the dynamic of the pitcher and the catcher as they working together. And when you see a catcher involved like that, you know, demonstrative behind the plate, I want it here. You know, with the, with the hand signals, you know, tapping the glove on the dirt. I want this pitch down. All that stuff to show you how much he cares. Here's Holt takes a pitch inside. And Ramirez will be the beneficiary of that with Rivera behind the plate. Here's a guy who had struggled early and Rivera staying right with him. Yep. Pitch by pitch. Holt in the left. It's Geyer waiting to catch it, and the Rays take game one of this series from the Boston Red Sox at Fenway. Rays are winners tonight by a count of 5-1. to one. They win their 14th game of the year, and they'll move into second place alone. They started the day tied with Baltimore for second in the East. And so the Rays will be two games behind.